Hey guys, welcome back to another Realm of the Mad God video, and in today's video I want to discuss my thoughts and impressions on Oryx Sanctuary, and I gotta say, it is awesome. See, while I think Fungal Cavern was an interesting endgame dungeon by design, there wasn't really any part of it where I felt genuinely afraid for my life. The Lost Halls in particular was a challenge, but most of that challenge was just nullified with the usage of priests and a marble seal. But the Sanctuary, first of all, it's aesthetically pleasing. They put a lot more effort into the decoration and design of the dungeon to the point where it gives off a completely different atmosphere and even look compared to the other endgame dungeons. I know the Lost Halls was meant to be a labyrinth-like maze where every room looks the same to throw you off, but visually it was the most unstimulating thing I've ever seen. The fungal caverns and nests were a step up for sure, but even so it felt like they just reused the same kind of floor and wall setup with no real change in between room to room. But the sanctuary, okay, not only is it big, but it's just really nice. I love walking through the different halls of the place and seeing the attention to detail, almost like we've transitioned from 32-bit to 64-bit textures or something. Now, I haven't been able to go into too many since Oryx 3 runs are not as commonplace as Lost Halls, what with the lack of raid leaders and scarcity of runes, so most of the bosses I went through, actually rather all of them, were just the treasure, which uh, some people say is the easiest one, so I've never seen the boss rooms for Dama, Lucorix, or Besa, but Gemsbok, meh. Does he have a nice boss room, all the shiny jewels and gems through the gold crested hallway followed by entering the vault, it's beautiful. If you remember in some of my videos, I mentioned that I had full intent to go in Oryx 3 blind, to give myself sort of an extra layer of challenge, mostly because I was stacking way too many 8-8s and I really wanted to get rid of some of them without having to self-destruct, since, you know, it's cool to see but mass deaths by walking into lava pools in the godlands, it's not exactly how I want to see my characters go. So I decided to do these ones no nexus, meaning you either defeat the dungeon or die trying, and uh, yeah, it was met with some reasonably not necessarily sad failures, but it didn't feel good dying, that's for sure. The minions themselves are interesting since you get three for each advisor. It's a really cool touch that they all have stations befitting that of their head superior, with uh, Chancellor Dama having minions that regulate the political facets within Oryx's chain of command, Treasurer Gemsbok's lackeys oversee the social and financial aspect, Lucorix's crew captains the religious sector, and Chief Basis men control the military. It's a nice touch in terms of design that I wanted to give Decker credit to because they could have easily just made a bunch of amorphous blobs of goo and called it a day. The sprite work for this dungeon deserves my praise for sure. Despite these being 16 by 16, they've done really well with making every enemy look pronounced and distinguished. And apparently, the names of these four bosses are based on the different species of the genus Oryx. So you mean to tell me that this entire time, the Dark Ruler Mad God Death Doom Despair Oryx is named after a freaking antelope? <laughs> I couldn't take this boss seriously anymore after that, like what the hell? <laughs> As for the bosses though, um... The bosses themselves, like I mentioned, I have not the foggiest idea what Dama, Lucorix, and Besa are since I've only had Gemsbok in all six of my runs where it didn't disconnect. Gemsbok's boss fight feels very much like what I'd expect from someone who is good with money. He likes to bounce around everywhere and shoot a bunch of debuffs towards players while attacking with coins and playing little tricks on you such as playing the cup shuffle game only with coins. I like it because it adds his theme into the challenge, but if he's widely considered to be the easiest of the four bosses, I can't really imagine how the other three would be since while he's not debilitatingly hard, he's not a pushover, you know, by any means. Similar to the Marble Colossus, there's a lot of stuff flying towards you that it could be next to impossible to dodge all of them, so I trusted my fundamentals and just simply stuck close to the group since I was going in with no prior knowledge or intel. But what I noticed quickly is that Gemsbok's fight can either be made really easy or really difficult based on how much you know his mechanics. Immediately, it was made clear that it's possible to have him stuck between two of the four jeweled platforms on the map by placing decoys there which can save a lot of time, especially given one of his phases and telling him teleporting around incessantly, and it makes it hard to hit him. Plus, as I mentioned before, with this coin shuffle recklessly attacking everything with the health bar isn't the right way to go about these fights since destroying the wrong coin extends his most dangerous phase even further. Not to mention the added trickery of one of the three coins glowing to lure you into thinking that's the right one. This is really important for endgame bosses since it incentivizes you to have a more complex understanding and more thorough understanding of each individual boss instead of just steamrolling everything through sheer numbers. I didn't even touch on the big bad himself, Ozone. Or I mean Oryx 3, excuse me. For the first time in my life playing Realm, my heart was actually pounding during the fight. Even when Lost Halls first came out and I defeated my first Void, I never felt as nervous fighting the Void Entity as I do fighting Oryx 3. He doesn't really have any particular cheap mechanics where it's just a bunch of BS and vulnerability phases that only serve to make fights longer than they have to be for no creative reason, 
He's almost always exposed, but he does so much damage. I've yet to complete my first one since of the three times I successfully reach him. Two of them I died during his celestial phase where he goes all shiny and turns the floor dark and stuff. Considering I had no prior experience during the testing periods, I'd like to believe I did kind of a pretty good job handling the guy. Unlike Oryx 2 though, most of O3's phases don't feel oppressive, they feel like a challenge. I feel like this battle was worthy of all the hype and discussion around the boss for the past like 5 years. I'm thoroughly impressed. I don't exactly know the sentiments of other people when it comes to this, but I think it was a good step in the right direction in terms of future level and character design on Deku's part. I really hope this sets the standard for what they should do in the future because everything from the dungeon's design and decor to the ministers and the actual boss himself, it feels not only enthralling to go through, but actually worth the trouble it takes to get there. I haven't even looked at all the items yet, and I plan to make videos on those later, that is if Talwar of course doesn't beat me to it. There might be a few gripes I have that I could talk about, but I haven't done enough runs to really run my final judgement on Oryx's Sanctuary, but then again, this is my first impressions video, it's not a full review. I'll let you guys know when I have my first clear too, so stay tuned for that. It is surprising how this update had no real problems in the way of disconnections, bugs, or glitches. Some say DECA could have released this a lot earlier, but I personally follow the train of thought that a delayed game that comes out great is always better than a rush game that comes out poor, so it was worth the wait. That being said, if you guys are enjoying this event, be sure to let me know in the comments section below, and if you can, a rating would be much appreciated. Be sure to subscribe for future content, but for now, I'm going to go back to doing a couple more runs to see if I can beat 03. For now, that's going to be it. Thank you all so much for watching, and I hope to see you again soon in the next video. Take care.